YouTube, it's Chris, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the 4090s and should you care, should you upgrade, should you even be interested at all, okay? It's about time we do this. I've done this with the 3090 and the 2080 Ti when it came out. Now, this video isn't scripted at all, so just deal with it, it is what it is, but I wanna give you some really good information. I mean, just talk about um, first-hand experience about this. I'm sure most of you guys have already seen the YouTuber benchmarks and stuff like that. Blah, 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 cool, whatever. But um, I'm going to tell you guys how it is, short, straight, and simple. If you guys play on 1080p um, competitive settings, even 1440p super, super low in um, all the titles or more ESL titles like Valorant and CSGO, uh, you'll, you'll be wasting your money, okay? Um, 3000 series card from NVIDIA, like a 6900 XT, so like a 30, 30, uh, 80 Ti, 3090, 6900 XT, you're not going to see big gains at all. Okay, where you're going to see the big gains with these cards is in really going to shine in 1440p, higher settings, 4K. Okay, now obviously there'll be some really GPU bound games that you'll see scaling in 1080p, but you'll be very, very disappointed, very, very disappointed for the price. Okay, so that's a bit of a heads up. Now, if you wanted to get one of these things, they've over engineered the Founders Edition. I've worked on three already, plus uh, my own. Okay, um, the Founders Edition cards are sort of over engineered. So you're not really missing out. Calls on them are really, really good. Um, the BICE um, power target is 600. So if you get the Founders Edition, um, you're doing all right, okay? It doesn't really matter. You can get after, some of the aftermarket cards around a little bit cooler. It doesn't actually matter. It doesn't really matter what kind of card you get. I would say probably just get the cheapest one. But if you wanted to be really picky, in my opinion, okay, right? Now, you'll never ever drop to a 600 watt, what I found, unless you're doing like 8K. Man, I've seen it max do like 450, okay? Um, in majority of the benchmarks that I've used, in games like 300, um, 1440p high. But um, the only time I've ever, the, the max I've been able to draw out of this damn card was Superposition 8K, and that did 520 watt. So it doesn't really matter too much, but if you wanted to be picky and say you can't get a Founders card, um, I would highly recommend going to Discord. Shout out to Drooms, as always, always do this. Did this with the 3090 and the 2080 Ti. Go and find the cheapest card that has a 600 watt bias because more than likely it has a better cooler on it. And why would you go spend that much on a card to get a lower bias target? Say you were to get like a 451. Unless you're saving that much money, which you'll find you actually won't be. Okay. Get any of the cards that are 600 watt. Okay. And the cheapest one. That's what I would say. Okay. Um, I went and did that. Got the Gigabyte Gaming OC. I genuinely hate Gigabyte as a company, but it was the cheapest card at the time that I could find that had a 600 watt bias. So not selling Founders Editions over here in um, Australia. It's a big bummer. Um, so let's just look at Scork Tech. This is an Australian retailer. This is in Australian dollars here. Okay. Now this Tough was actually going for 3,500 at the time on this site and other websites. Right. It's funny how the prices come down and it's sold out. So scrolling down. You'd want to go, so probably the cheapest, um, you know, 360 card. Don't worry too much about the brand, okay? The Zotac. So check out the Zotac. Um, looks like Dreams has done it here. If you guys can't find the card on here, you could always try Tech Power Up, okay? So I'll show you guys. Go straight to Tech Power Up. All right. Go to Databases VGA Bias Collection. Go to NVIDIA. Go to Card Vendor. So Zotac. Go to the... 4090 and we're kind of out of luck here. We've only got the Amp Extreme. That's kind of annoying. So, oh no, that is the Amp Extreme. So we're good. Let's look at the Amp Extreme and the Amp Extreme is, is only 495 watt. So I'd rather get like, you know, I'll, I'll look at other PC retailers. So here we go. Like the Gigabyte is in stock. Uh, the Gigabyte OC, we can check on here or Drooms has done this here. Um, Gigabyte, 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 Gaming OC, 600 watt. And that's kind of what I went. Now, I believe I paid 3,200 mine. Um, yeah, the Asus Tufts have kind of started to come back in stock. But if, if you would wanted to wait it out, just get the Tough Gaming, man. Um, tough Gaming, I believe, is 600 watt. You'd be fine. Now, you're going to have to use the four pins in the adapter. If you only use three pins, you'll only be limited to 450 watts. So, yeah, the Tough OC and the Strix OC are 600 watt. 
That is a tough, oh, that's a tough gaming. I'm not 100% sure if the tough gaming is. From what I've read on the overclocking forums, I think the tough is 600 watt, but just maybe cross check that with some other people. But look, do you hear me out? Like if you're spending that much money, guys, um, don't like limit yourself. Um, you could, for the same kind of price, you could get 600 watt. Not like it really matters, but you know, technically speaking, it might have a slightly better cooler on it. Like you're never really going to hit this anyway, unless you hate K gaming. But I just feel like if you're going to spend that much, just get a card with 600 watt bias. Now, a lot of the, um, a lot of the guys, um, hardware reviewers are saying, uh, overclocking is useless. Um, and I'd probably agree to a certain point because these cards are that damn powerful in rasterization performance. It's ridiculous. Um, this card is basically, if, you, if I wanted to be a 4K gamma with actually competitive low input lag, like we're there now, we are there. 4K, 240 hertz ready, easy, absolutely easy, in incredible. We actually need decent 4K, 240 monitors. There's only the G8, 32 inch, it's VA, it's, it's, it's angled, it's bleh. Um, but we're getting there. If we could get like 27 inch, 28 inch, 4K, 240, the low input lag, like, you know, the Samsung G8 up around there, um, be freaking awesome. G-Sync would be nice. So there is scaling with overclocking. Okay, we've done 4K optimized here, just to show you guys, this was the first card I worked on with a the client. Um, there is scaling, but it's not huge. So it's not the end of the world if you don't want to overclock it, but I feel like if you've gone all out to get a really good car, new card, you want the most out of it too. Um, and all of these cards will behave exactly the same, like I've said, I've worked on three and then myself. Mm, pretty much majority of them will do 3,000 in the core, easy and then plus 1500 on the memory, okay. Literally majority of them will do that. There's one guy in Discord that got really unlucky with his Strix OC, he couldn't go over like a uh, thousand on the memory. I just told him to send the card back because it's just not, from what behavior that I've seen, I've also spent a like, day reading on the overclocking forums and stuff, what everyone else has been able to do. But anyway, just to show you how it scales, so we did core uh, roughly around 3000 megahertz on the, on the, me uh, the core, ignore that because the car's not under load right now. But so there's a, there's a bit of scaling, but it's not huge, okay? And then I did memory as well, okay? So there's scaling there. Um, I've worked on a couple of others, but I didn't show results. Curious, there's a bit of a baseline. Um, I can show you guys this here if you're curious. Um, this is with the overclock max that I was able to do on my card. I'm going to do a bit of a overclocking um, guide in this video shortly. Uh, 1080p extreme, high score I've been able to get like, um, I got really lucky with my memory. I'm able to do like uh, 1860 plus 1860. And then plus 235 is about th uh, 3030 on the core. Um, and I it was streaming last night for like seven hours um, testing this card in all different um, benchmarks um, and stress tests. So did I get an 8K optimized? Yeah, 8K optimized and 1080p extreme. So yeah, um, where we're at with these cards now, uh, we're actually CPU bottlenecked even in 4K. So um, I'm one of the really lucky ones that got to work with Jack Frags. Um, and, you know, I compared it in a game that I play, which isn't, it's not the greatest um, game to compare with, but um, I did see quite a bit of scaling with um, the 13900K versus the 5800X 3D in low settings. Um, he was getting about an 80, 80 extra FPS, which is cool to see. He was on DDR5 too, really nice DDR5 kit that I got him to get, like 6400C32. I'm on 37. 33C14 with custom tune timings in the 5800X 3D. Is it worth upgrading from a 5800X 3D or if you're looking at doing an upgrade now, I would still recommend the 5800X 3 for price and performance, but maybe that's, um, sorry for a different video, but when you've got a 4090, like here's where we're at. We're so CPU bottlenecked, even in 4K, because he gets like an extra 30 than I do in 4K. I, I was running around getting like 330 in 4K. Um, he was getting 360 in that scenario that we're testing. Um, uh, better off just waiting. We need better CPUs for these uh, graphics cards. It's even even a slight CPU bottleneck in 4K, which is just insane when you think about it with these cards. It's great. And for the memes, I got out um, Heaven, which is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> this is the 3090 score I got ages ago on 1080p, high-ish settings, and the 4090. If you guys are curious, you see scaling in a benchmark that nobody gives a shit about anymore. Um, which is interesting. I've got some other benchmarks here. I'll quickly show you guys and then I'll probably just do a bit of a graphics card overclock video and show you guys what to look out for with these cards if you do want to overclock them.
Yeah, but I definitely want to point out if you have something like a 6900 XT and a 3080 Ti, unless you you are playing genuinely 1440p or 4K, please please don't get this card. Um, as you can see, Fire Strike Extreme, just really quickly, what was my best score here? 31690, and then Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme on the 4090 versus 6900 XT. 30. 39249. So yeah, look, I'm going to be honest, the 6900 XT is kind of a cheat sheet in 1080p, um, especially with resizable bar on, um, especially if you have an AMD CPU, it's a cheat sheet in 1080p. Um, like it, it gets really interesting. So I'll talk a little bit, right? So um, in the game that I kind of play at the moment or care most about like Modern Warfare, when I'll test on, offline um, in a map, and it's not the greatest test, but I mean, it's what I play and it's what I scale with. Um, on the 6900 XT in, in, in um, you know, 720p low, I was getting 630. Um, on this card, I'm only getting 500, kind of CPU bottlenecked. Uh, Jack Frags with a 13900K was getting 590. Okay, but here's where it gets kind of interesting. On 1080p, it's the same as the 6900 XT, but on 1440p for me versus the th th the 4090 versus 6900 XT is like is like uh, an extra 80, right? And then in 4K, here's <laughs> very extremely interesting. In 4K, I can run around with about 330. With the 6900 XT, it was like max 180, 200. So you see see where I'm getting at with like the scaling there. Um, I'm still happy regardless because I play on 1440p high-ish settings and at the same time I'm really keen to get the 1440p 360Hz monitor that's going to be coming out soon and also um, look I'm going to be honest like AMD cards are, are great but they do suffer from frame pacing issues occasionally and there's there's bugs with the driver and that there's just little things that really bother me um, about the cards so you know I know that I've vouched for those cards a lot in my videos but I've always always said you know there's, uh, when, especially when people come in and ask me on stream, like there, there's issues with them. But um, look, it, it was interesting to see uh, a bunch of these benchmarks. I am either CPU bottlenecked or they prefer more cores. And at the same time, there's some weird behavior because I've got better tuned RAM than some of these scores um, versus other guys. Um, and I've got a higher memory clock and a higher um, boost clock, but I was getting slightly less scores. So I think there's more going on. There might be like the actual active boost frequency or something like that. Um, there might be more going on, or maybe it's because this install is completely corrupt and I need to do a fresh install. Um, but I doubt that somehow, but to be honest, it is kind of scuffed because I, I redid my RAM overclocks and um, I do need to reinstall. I, I would like to rerun some of these when I reinstall on, on a fresh Windows um, with everything running good. But um, it was it was weird. I, I, I got um, in Firestrike Extreme, I got up to like 70 uh, on the leaderboards, but on a bunch of others, I was uh, kind of like maybe 120. So just off the leaderboards. But it doesn't really matter too much. But there might be more to the story than uh, pure clocks and temps. Um, because I was actively comparing this against other guys. Although there is a bunch, uh, other than Port Royal, Royal there's, a, there's a bunch of these benchmarks that just prefer more cores. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But um, um, I would like to get another CPU eventually because I know I am CPU bottlenecked even in 1440p even in 4k um, but I feel like 13th gen isn't even enough um, we need more for this graphics card to actually make it viable but if you guys are curious these are some of the scores that I was able to get some other things I wanted to mention that I wrote down in discord to mention for this video um, I considered using video filters now because I guess I get you get that many frames but I'm in a really GPU balanced situation like Modern Warfare multiplayer um, and probably Rebirth, it's pretty damn GPU heavy. Uh, I, I lost 70 to 100 FPS with NVIDIA filters. And that was just even with one filter on or a whole bunch of filters on. Still a huge loss. Um, and by the time you've got your settings dialed into what you like, it's not really like, I want to maintain like a, a decent frame rate. Even if I am going to use G-Sync, V-Sync in cap at like 267 or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, I still want to, and I would, I would like with the filters on, it would like jump down, bro. Like, so uh, video filters, still not a fan of, hey, like they just need to fix that because it's such good technology. It'd be so nice to use the filters, but man, like a hundred frames lost with that. It's like, bro, like, you know, why don't I just stick with the 3090 at that point? Um, and just not use filters. But um, also just wanted to ma mention full screen projector mode. Um, it's quite nice because I have to use that with the NVIDIA card if I want to ever use V-Sync. Um, and I only lost about 10 to 20 FPS. But I think that's the only kind of extra information that I wanted to say. If you guys want to have a read over that in the pause of video and have a read over that, uh, go for it.
um, interesting food for thought, but I think now I'm just going to get stuck in with a bit of a graphics card overclock guide and um, with this this card and what to look out for because um, this card's kind of interesting. This card will, you, you throw anything at it and it will take it and it won't crash and it will just artifact. Um, although like one of the cards I worked on would crash to a certain point, but most of the time it's just like you need to sit there looking for artifacts, not for crashing, which is super interesting. So yeah. So first thing I guess I'd want you to do, install MSI Afterburner and River Tuner. Uh, that'd be very, very handy to have. Um, GPZ would be nice. Uh, enable resize bar if you can. Not like it matters for some of these benchmarks, but you know, you can check resize bar here. You can check it here. Um, also another thing, you know, you can just check the max bias uh, target. So we definitely have 600 watt here. Um, if you don't have this power limit and you're not able to drag it up, you might only have three cables plugged in. Um, so yeah, you'll be limited there. Um, if you want to check to make sure that you are drawing the full 600 watt, you could set up overlays in monitoring like I have here. Okay. And look, honestly, like I said, the only thing that I've been able to find to draw that amount of watts was superposition 8K. So I'll quickly run that just to show you guys. Cause that's the one thing I guess I'd want to check on to make sure, am I getting the full, I mean, you can tell by the voltage, the, the power limit, if you can use the slider or not, but yes, yeah, so I'm only drawing like 490 here. I mean, that's without the overclock. Also something I want to mention, the voltage slider in MSI Afterburner works. You can get it up to 1.1 volt. And if you want to hit around the 3000 megahertz frequency, you're going to need to do that. Otherwise, from my understanding, it kind of caps around anywhere between 28 to 29 um, if you're only on 1.05, unless you've got a really lucky card. But we are definitely getting over 450 here. So I know that we've got the full 600 watt, but this is, this is just crazy. Like hundred FPS in, in this benchmark in 8k, like guys, it's crazy when you think about it. Like this is literally like 8k 120 hertz, um, ready. You, if, if they had an 8k display, with 120 hertz, that was G-Sync. Uh, it's it would be actually incredible, but um, these cards are. It's it's very weird to me because when Nvidia did their um you know a little presentation, they hardly talked about the gaming performance in that. They were just talking about all this other stuff we didn't care about. Even DLSS, DLSS 3.0 is useless. You don't need it because the card's that powerful. Like why would you bother? I mean, unless you wanted to do 8K with DLSS, render from 4K up to 8k and then get like double those frames here you know i want 200 fps in uh, upscaled 4k to 8k but i just anyway um let's get stuck with the overclocking stuff so gps is going to be kind of handy because we can we can kind of click on sensors tab and see what's going on here i'm just going to minimize river tuner because we're not going to need it right now and we'll start from complete scratch um i like to start with heaven um and kind of things cranked up so like ultra extreme eight times crank up the resolution don't have it in full screen because it's going to be annoying because you're going to need to alt tab a little bit and what we need to do here is you need to go ahead and click run i've got the little overlay from him is afterburner you can set that up if you want you don't have to you could just have gpu z here if you wanted to okay and then i'll have it miss out afterburner here okay so first thing we want to do um personally i'd be because these cards run so cool Usually I would say if a card doesn't run cool, you can just start with the power limit separate, but because these cards run so cool, crank up the temp limit, crank up the power limit so you're not limited at all, okay? Now I'm gonna set a minimum fan speed of 85. Now you guys don't have to do that. You could probably go on auto, but just keep an eye on the temps. We kind of want to get the best results here. Um, anything over 85, you're just going to be blowing air for no reason, depending on the card. Some cards might be too loud on 85. You could find that sweet spot. I'm probably going to run auto myself once I've dialed everything in and done my new install, but just, just for now, we just want constant sort of fan speed. So what we'll do is we'll start increasing the clock. So, um, you know, we'll just start with a hundred or whatever. Now, depending on if you've got an OC edition on, cause like I said, most of these cards will scale to 3000. So we're at factory boost now with max power limits, temp limits. Okay. And we're doing like 2715. So I'll try with a hundred. Okay, and what we want to keep an eye out for now is one, driver crashes, two, uh, PC completely shutting off, um, three, blue screens, or four, the, the graphical artifacts, or five, the, the graphics card, just the benchmark just crashing out, okay? So we're at 2,800. I already know sort of the limit. I believe it was 2,035, but we'll crank this up. Like I said, most of these are going to do 3,000, but look, at here's where it gets interesting. See how we're kind of at 20, 20, um, 110? If I'm up the voltage 
slider. So you'll need to go into settings. Uh, you'll need to go unlock voltage control, force constant voltage, I believe. Just check those two on, I think. And if I up this, you'll see we'll do 1.1 volts and look at the core speed jump up, okay? So what I would recommend is definitely have power limit up and temp limit up, core voltage up, do fan speed up and let's save a profile, okay? Right, and we'll save that to profile one. What I'd recommend doing at this stage is go ahead and run a benchmark with superposition, okay? Probably do superposition, I don't know, 4K optimized or something like that. That'd be fine, 4K would be stressful enough. Um, do 4K, take a screenshot of that from that profile. So that's just like no limits, but factory clocks. And then, then you can go back to this and let's dial in, you know, the a, a kind of overclock we can get. So we've got no limits now. So I'll show you where I get artifacts on this card. So just start increasing it until you start to get artifacts. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that there, I, this little like blue artifacts. Sometimes there will be like little white block boxes, black boxes, blue boxes, really strange artifacts you'll see. You guys can't see it that well. So let me bump it up a little bit more and hopefully I can get something blatantly obvious. Now, some of you won't be lucky, won't be able to push it. That, see how we got, we've got the blue blocks like there? That's, that's artifacting. Start cracking it down till you don't see that at all, okay? It doesn't mean it's still gonna be fully stable because you're gonna wanna have to run some benchmarks and stuff like that. But um, you're gonna have to slowly start bumping there. I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing artifacts. So start bumping it down, try to find that sweet spot. And then when you find that sweet spot where you're sitting here, it's not crashing, and you swear you don't see any artifacts at all, Okay, once you've done that, all right. So I know for this card, because I've already found the sweet spot, it's 235, I believe. Um, okay, 235 was like, 240 would like just crash. 235 was just perfect. Um, but if you find the sweet spot and you really don't want any headaches, just, just set it like 10 under or something. So say if I went, I know 235 is just a sweet spot, you don't want any headaches ever. Just bump it down a little bit and then like, you're going to be good. But like I said, most of these cards will do 3,000 anyway. So if I really didn't care about squeezing every tiny little last drop out of it, I'd probably do this or this card. But I'm greedy. I want a tiny little bit more. Uh, that's it. So once you've done that, save that to another profile. Okay. And then go ahead and um, go run superposition again. Go run it in, um, you know, 4K optimized. And then compare your score. If the score is higher, great. If it passed, it nearly crashes, great. If you're on the right road. There is still a possibility that it's not stable. You could run a little bit of fur mark, you know, in 1440p or something like that. Just let it loop for like half an hour or something like that if you wanted to. Or you could find anything else, run a whole bunch of other benchmarks. You could loop it. Or just go play your game with cranked up settings. You know, you're just really looking out for artifacting and crashing at this point because we already know you've got a better score. Okay, if you've tested it with profile three. So after that, I'll look at working on memory. I will cover undervolting here, but I didn't have any luck with undervolting, by the way. Um, so anyway, so we try to find the sweet spot for the memory. So say you've already done that. All right, just try to keep things separate so you know what's going on. So let's go for the memory. Like I said, pretty much the majority of these cards will do 1500. But just to be safe, just go 500 increments. Okay, 500, and we can see it reflect there in the GPU memory. All right, 1000. This is where one of my um, buddies in Discord got really unlucky at this point. Um, we're looking at for artifacts, okay? And then 1500. Now, I can't remember. I believe I could do 1680 here. I was very, very lucky. Um, I feel like I'm lucky with this, even though there are guys on 3D Mark that are getting better scores than me that have less of boost clocks. So, less of memory clock. So, I don't know even though it's not by much, but anyway. So like, yeah, you kind of try to find the sweet spot. So let me crank it up to the point where, like I got really concerned. I'm like, how the frick can I do such a high memory frequency in this card? Here's where it gets interesting. I didn't see artifacts straight away. Took a little bit. But look, I've got this cranked up all the way. Now see those, those are artifacts. Either stop it or buy it down straight away, okay? That artifacts, bad. You guys saw that, obviously. I'd hope you saw that. Um, 1900, so here's where it gets interesting. Gonna sit there and wait and wait. I had to like sometimes wait or restart this, then I'd get artifacts. And it took quite a little while for me, but I got artifacts all the way down to 1860. 1860 was just a sweet spot. 1865, 
um, would, I believe I could do a little higher than this, but when I went and actually played, and I could pass all the benchmarks, but when I actually, or oh, stress test, but when I actually played like Modern Warfare, um, even just in the lobby or the Warzone lobby, it would crash. So you may have to doubt, like, don't don't expect it to work in all games. It's it's I know it's really annoying, but it might not necessarily work. Even though on paper it looks good in benchmarks or stress tests, sometimes you might have to dial it down a little bit more in the game too. Okay, so um, you kind of do that. So say I found my sweet spot, right, which was eighteen sixty. Um, you know, I'd go ahead and um, I'd run the um, benchmark again. So. That's, that's kind of where I, I know what this card can do already. So go ahead and run Superposition 8, uh, 4K again on that profile and then compare it versus the other results. Okay, here's where it gets interesting with video memory. Make sure that the benchmark is better. If it's not better, it's probably not stable. Also, another thing I want to mention, most of you wouldn't have done this, but do not turn on um, turn off memory error correction. Um Sorry, do not turn on memory error correction because then you're going to have a far hard time finding. So don't turn this on. You, you might have a hard time trying to find um, like artifacts or errors. So don't turn that on. That's off by default out of curiosity. And also something I should probably mention really, really quick. If you're curious, if you followed my other videos, MSI mode is not on by default. Okay, when you install the driver, I put it in MSI mode. So we're at minus 30, but before that was not a minus number. And that's actually something NVIDIA talks about. Um, NVIDIA, low latency mode, uh, low latency guide. Okay, video low latency guide, MSI. Okay, that's actually something NVIDIA talks about. I, they did that with their 3000 series cards. That's when they did these um, little guides. I don't know why. Put it in MSI mode, you might get slightly better results. Okay, um, if you don't know anything about that, if you follow in my Windows 10 fast track videos or my optimization guides, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right. But anyway, um, what else did I want to cover? I want to cover a bit of a, an undervolt guide. So you can lock the minimum core clock. Let's get up uh, heaven again. So yeah, I mean, I've tried all the methods of undervolting and I didn't get any better scores um, at all. Sadly, I, I wanted to, but I didn't. But um, there, there might be a use case for you guys wanting to undervolt. Um, you might want to just keep the card super cool or maybe you're going to fit the card in a... Uh, mini ITX somehow. I don't know how you do that or a custom water loop with CPU and it gets too hot. Like there's, there's going to be use cases. Personally, I would go balls to the wall and find out the max that you can get out of it first. Okay. And then you can use curve editor. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can hold shift. All right. And then drag it down to a point where you like it at. So, you know, say we drag it down and then press apply. It's going to underclock the card, obviously. Um, but it's not really going to change the voltage here. So that's just one thing that you can do. Another thing you could do is let me reset this. It's, you could lock the minimum boost clock and I've covered that in other videos and that's only really useful for like CSGO and Valve when it doesn't even use the graphics card. Um, and then some people have issues with that. So say you wanted to do, I don't know, an undervolt of, uh, you know, 9.50, sorry, 0.5. 0.95, okay, you press L to lock and then press apply. Now, because we've already overclocked, we kind of already know the sweet spot of like the, here, you got, here you've got voltage, so 1.1's max on this card, unless you do like some modding, which people might do in the future. Uh, you definitely want way better cores for that. Um, you know, and then that's like, that's the, the voltage and that's the clock. So don't be afraid to click on that. You can see what the clock is, like the nine, um, 0 0.95 would be the sweet spot for 2715 because I already know my sweet spot with the overclock first, right? So, you know, you could try undervolting it further, which we will do in a sec. But I just wanted to show you guys, say you wanted to lock it at a certain thing, you, you could do that with your overclock. Okay, so the next option is where it gets interesting and I found it's kind of annoying um, and I'll show you why. So say... I don't know, we wanted to do, it doesn't, like for me, I, the, the, the lowest voltage I can do on this overclock is um, 1.075, okay? So any any lower I get artifacts and same thing again with the artifacts and running the benchmark to, to, to check, like validation to make sure it's not worse. If it's, cause you'd really want it to be better with the undervolt or the same with like 
better calling, right? But let's just say drastically, because you guys I would, I spent a bit of time screwing around with this. And like I said, it didn't have better results unless I wanted to just not care so much about the top, top score and just get better temps. But these cards already run so cool anyway, so I don't care. But um, usually they would say, so say when I'm going to be doing 950, like you could drag this all the way down and press like apply. Okay. But it kind of bugs out and doesn't work. It's very, very annoying. So what I would recommend doing is with your overclock, all right, just go ahead and re reset and reapply that. Okay. Uh, the best luck that I had, so I went to curve uh, with the overclocks on, went to curve editor. And for some reason, see on other, I'll show you guys real quick. So PC World did this video. Um, so, but this was on a different card, right? So what he was able to do is like find like the max sort of like frequency um, and then then lock it, right? So find find the max frequency and voltage you want and then press apply. And he gets, he gets a dead straight line, okay? Dead straight line, all right? Now, when I try to do that, so say it's 235 we want. Um, so that's our overclocks now, right? And say we wanted to do a dot .950, it would be 950 at, you guys can see, sorry, you guys couldn't see that. 950 at 2715, okay? So 950 at 2715. So we'll turn this to off and then apply, okay? 950 to 2017. So we'll go, we'll find 950 and 2715. Watch this, right? So that's in, in the perfect world, like the old cards, you would press apply and it would straighten this whole line out, but it doesn't. It keeps going and, and it's ignoring it. Okay, very annoying. We don't want that. Okay, see how it's here? We want it to be here. So here's a little worker and a trick that I found, right? Scrap that on these cards, right? Just load your, your max OC. Okay, we're on our max OC here. Go to curve editor, right? Hold shift, drag this down like halfway, right? Then go to 950, right? Then drag it up to what we, what we do, 2715. Now press apply. And now we've got a straight line. So that's kind of something I discovered today. What annoys me is, um, you know, there, there are YouTubers talking that undervolting is bad. They have issues. And then the YouTubers saying definitely do it. Blah, 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 blah. Cool, whatever. I don't care. Do the benchmarks before and after. Use case. Maybe you want lower power draw. But no one's showed how to like actually undervolt it or their method of undervolting, which is very, very annoying. So I would say this would probably be the best method undervolting. I wouldn't lock the minimum boost clock unless, like I said, you're playing games like CSGO or Valorant. But yeah, so that's something that you could do. And say you wanted more out of it. Oh, okay, let's, um, you know, I want, I want lower voltage. So you could try... I don't know, let's try doing the same on like slightly lower voltage. So hopefully it just cleans it up for us. Um, no, we would have to, we would have to start fresh again. So what are we at? Um, 950 at 2715. Let's just reset that. Load our crazy overclock. Curve editor, shift down about halfway-ish. So 915 at 2715, All right? Then press apply. Okay, and now we're running. So, and now, and now we've got artifacts. So we need more voltage for this clock speed. Does that make sense? So then, again, let's load our crazy overclock. Go to curve editor. What are we doing? What voltage were we doing? Or was it like nine fifteen? Let's try nine twenty-five. So was it nine? Yeah, we'll try nine twenty-five. So shift down. Right, nine twenty-five, twenty-seven fifteen. I hope you guys are picking up what I'm throwing down here. Right. So now 9.25, we're not getting artifacts. So that's roughly the sweet spot. You'd have to play around with it more. Once again, check for artifacts, run benchmarks before and after. I don't wanna run benchmarks before and after with like an overclock on the core with, with max voltage on, on this same frequency versus the undervolts um, to make sure you're not losing out on any performance. I'm still getting some artifacts here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's gonna need more voltage and we would have to do the same thing again with the undervolt. Um, so once again, I'll just do it one more time, you guys, okay. Um, I, I loaded our, our overclock, I'll scroll this down, 
uh, we did 9.25, so let's just try a little bit more. 9.35 at 27.15. Uh, no, I didn't mean to lock that. Sorry. Apply. And 9.35, are we getting artifacts? Not yet. It might be just the sweet spot. So, yeah, you could do it that way or say you want to steal the max which is what I did. So say you still wanted the max frequency. So what have we got? We've got um, 3015 or 3030, but at one, one volt. Um, now here's where it gets really annoying. MSI after burner max is at 3000 megahertz. So I can kind of only do like a 3000 megahertz um, lock, sorry, uh, undervolt. So let's just bump this down by 15. Uh, so there'll be 225, All right? And it's ignoring. Oh no, there we go. Two twenty-five. Right. So we'll go to curve editor. We're doing one point one volts. So at three thousand. So let's bump this down, and let's try one point zero seven five volts at three thousand. Apply, and then stress test. So now we're doing three thousand instead of three thousand at one point one. We're doing three thousand at uh, 1.075. Once again, you would have to check for artifacts, um, um, benchmark it before and after, and also go ahead and stress test it. Um, now, this is the lowest volts I can get for this clock on this card. Every card's going to be different. Silicon lottery at the end of the day. Now, I didn't have any luck. I couldn't get any better scores. All my best scores are with this. Um, and the card runs relatively decently cool. Um, but there is definitely a use case for you guys that don't want to draw max power target for undervolting. Just check before and after with like um, the boost clock and the max voltage or the default voltage versus the boost clock and your undervolt and make sure you're not getting horribly less performance. If you're getting more performance, great. If you're getting only slightly less cool, like whatever, um, you know, it's the cards running cool and that's what you care about. So cool. I think that pretty much covers like most things um, with overclocking this card. This is my sweet spot. In reality, I'm probably going to end up bumping this down just a tad. Um, I'll have to go play some games for like six hours straight in ultra settings. That'll be the nice test because I've just about ran everything under the sun. Everything from 3D Mark, um, you know, Fur Mark, um, Superposition, Heaven, God knows what else I've ran on this. It's nice. Also something I want to mention in here, but it's like you're better off just looking out for crashes and artifacts. Um, I, I was looking for a video memory stress test because there wasn't really much out there because say I wanted to properly stress test this video memory. Um, there is OCCT you could use. You could go to your graphics card. You could go to VRAM and you could run this test, but um, it, it could very well pass. From what I've read up, you could set this and run it to for half an hour to be safe. But um, I didn't have any errors and I'd still got a crash in Modern Warfare and I had to bump this down from, I was doing 1875 to 1860. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it could depend on the game too. Um, but yeah, um, that's it if you want to squeeze every last, but most of you, if you can't be fucked, just try to aim for 3000 on the clock and then plus 1500 on the memory. And if that doesn't work, just bump it down a tad. And if you're not getting crashes, cool. Because most of these cards seem to be kind of behaving exactly the same. That is all I have to say. I do have an optimization service on Twitter. You can go check that out. If you want me to work on your PC for you for a fair price free, I do stream on Twitch regularly, doing stuff like this, playing games, all sorts of stuff like that. Please subscribe to this YouTube. Give it some love, guys. Go check out my gaming channel as well. I've got another gaming channel. If you click on YouTube gaming channels, stuff like that. Follow me all on all the socials. I hope this video was helpful for you. Am I disappointed in buying this card? No, I'm glad to get off AMD. No more frame pacing issues. Game runs super smooth. 4K is actually viable. I'm genuinely thinking of going 4K now. Like generally 4K 240 screen when they come out. Either that or I'll get the 1440p 360. Um, I'm um, really happy to be back on NVIDIA drivers. They're just so much more hassle-free. Um, anyway, guys, see you in the next one. Thanks.